Hey everyone, it's Cody with UpToCode. Today we're just about to pour this engineered garage slab and I want to show you how we used an ICF block around the perimeter to help insulate it. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So we have everything formed up, rebar, we're ready to pour. Now you can see that this, I have my ICF block here. Now I used an Adura block and I just cut the nubs off. Now I formed this up a kind of a unique way. Um, because of its engineered slab, it's deeper around the perimeter for structural loading. So I have a two by six here, a three and a half inch gap, another two by six. And then I call this an L tie right here to help give it strength so I don't need as much bracing everywhere. Now, if you're not familiar with ICF block, what we did is we just cut the block in half and I have these little, like this is a Nadura block, so they are collapsible. I have these little snap ties that are remaining and that'll help bond the block to the concrete. And I'll get into the reason why we're doing this in a sec. But you can see we had to cut through the snap ties. Now these snap ties are what hold the block together while you're pouring in a regular situation, but it also allows me to screw into, through my formwork into the block to hold the, the block into position while we're pouring. Now, the other thing we've done is we've done these just quick uh, taper tops we just cut those out with a sawzall because what happens is, is you'll have a two by six wall sitting like this. Now you can't have a two by six overhanging uh, support by more than one third. So we had to dish these out so we had proper bearing for the two by six wall. So here's a better shot of the ICF block. It's actually ran down past the gravel. So we had the formwork and the blocks in place first. Then we set our gravel up against it. That allowed me to get the full 18 inch height of the ICF block, the Nadura block. Um, these ribs allow it to bond to the concrete and also these are the snap ties that we cut and they'll help bond better. And then here's just a better view and shot of how we did the taper tops just to get that proper bearing for the walls. So when we pour, we'll just tip all these out and we got a rebar and we got approval from the engineer so we're good to go. I want to get into why we're using the ICF block and that's because <clears throat> the engineer specs three inch foam up the slant and throughout the rest of the slab bearing on eight inches of gravel and then he wants he wants well essentially he wants three feet of foam coverage so technically on the prints we'd have a foot or actually 14 inches and then he wants foam out to here. But regardless, he wants foam around the perimeter. Now on the drawings, it shows a perfect level site. You just throw in some sheet foam against the concrete, backfill against it, you'll never see it. But in this case, if you just look around, you can see that we're out of level. The grade work is actually 18 inches different from front to back. This is a 24 by 36. Now because my client, he's gonna frame the garage himself. He doesn't have the tools and it just takes way more effort. If we were to just shove sheet foam up against the concrete, how is he gonna finish it on the areas that it's exposed? Well, with the ICF block, it's bonded into the concrete. His wall will be flush with the foam block and now he can attach siding or parging or anything he wants to the ICF block because of these snap ties. And then we're also meeting the insulation requirements set by the engineer. And yeah, I think that about covers it. So it's just a really cool idea. I know I didn't invent the idea. Um, when I talked to my ICF supplier about what he thought of doing it this way, he's like, oh yeah, guys do it all the time. So I think it's actually pretty smart and kind of hits two birds with one stone. So with that, I'll sign off. Thanks everyone. And don't forget to like, subscribe, oh yeah, and let me know what you think of the long hair. I haven't had long hair since junior high, which was in 
the 1990s. Thanks. And I might as well just show you what it looks like after we strip the forms. You can see how nice and clean it looks, how straight it all turned out. Uh, I think it looks pretty cool. It's gonna work really well for my client. Now we can attach siding to it and there's no qualms about that. The other thing we're gonna do And the engineer wants three feet of coverage of foam, so we're gonna lay some foam down there. Um, that's just what he specced. Here, we just added this thickened edge here so where the garage slab is. Um, and yeah, you can see the bottom of this block. Like you can see just the little bottom nubs of these Nadura blocks and everything. So yeah, take a look around and just, yeah, I think it turned out pretty good. So. Thanks for tuning in. Oh yeah, and don't forget, I have a video on the do's and don'ts of doing garage slabs. Really quick video, check that out because it'll give you a few tips of things that we learned when we poured this one.